Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Unfailing Love, our um, fall sacred recital. I want to thank Dr. Shin for putting these together. They've turned into a wonderful new tradition here at Concordia that we do once a semester. And it's an opportunity to um, utilize some of our exceptional solo and chamber musicians here at Concordia. And to do them, and to, to program music that is really important to our core mission at Concordia, to praise the Lord, um, and we're able to do it with this wonderful gift of music. So uh, we thank you for coming, and this is a wonderful time to reflect and um, uh, think about the goodness of God and hear about it in many different ways, including some wonderful devotions this morning. So please welcome our first performers. everybody. Good morning. Um, my name is Logan Warner. I am a senior here at the in the church music program and it's my pleasure to to talk with you a little bit about unfailing love this morning. And I want to take some time to break down what it means that God's love is unfailing. Unfailing love in our psalm today comes from the Hebrew word chesed. And this word brings a particular understanding of God's character. Chesed combines three main attributes into one beautiful package. These attributes being love, generosity, and enduring commitment. Love, generosity, and enduring commitment. Chesed has also been translated as loving kindness or loyal love. Chesed is not just a word to describe God's actions, but his very character. Who he is is fundamentally loving, generous, and faithful. In another psalm, Psalm 136, the writer exclaims, his, his chesed is forever, 26 times. And throughout all of those, he, he outlays the story of God's people coming out of Egypt into Jerusalem. Echoing that God's unfailing love is truly something that has underlined the entire history of God's creation. And another great example of God's unfailing love is in the story of Jacob. 
So for a little background, Jacob was the second son of Isaac, and Isaac had been blessed with the blessing of Abraham that through him would come a great nation. And um, Isaac had a firstborn, Esau, but Jacob stole the blessing from Esau. And so now the blessing went to Jacob. Like, if I was Esau, I, I would be pretty mad, honestly. Like, like that's God's blessing, and that was for me. But, but Jacob still received the blessing, and God still worked through Jacob. In Genesis 32, Jacob cried out to God, I'm not worthy of all the chesed that you've shown me. The reality is that he was not worthy of God's love, faithfulness, and generosity. But that's just who God is. I'm not sure... What you've, been go- what you've been going through, like coming to this recital today. I can say for myself that I have certainly not shown perfect love in all my relationships. I lie, I cheat, I steal, and I have not given God all that he deserves at all times either. I have been unfaithful, I've kept things for myself, and I have not loved God above all things at all times. And I think that if we're all honest, we could all say the same. The beauty is that God, in his unfailing love, sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us, fulfilling the promise that he made right after the fall in Genesis 3. He lived a perfect life, suffered, died, and rose again so that we could live in his his chesed forever. So that all of our unfaithfulness and all of our greed could be accounted for. Praise God for his unfailing love lasts forever. Thank you.
Hello, everybody. My name is Sam Held, and I'm a senior theology major, and I'm heading into the seminary next year. Uh, I've never once picked up my Bible and not been reminded of the love of God. It resonates throughout every single verse, whether it be a story or a law spoken or the gospel being shown to us. A lot of us read our Bibles on a daily or almost daily basis, and yet it seems hard to feel God's love at times. Maybe a family member passes away suddenly, or you sustain a serious injury, or perhaps something evil happens on the news. And all of these words that we hold so close to our hearts just seem to vanish, as if God's love isn't there anymore. I've been there, by the way. It seems so easy for Satan to deceive us into forgetting all of God's promises. But God's promises do not go away, even when we doubt that he is at work. Let's look at some of the things that the disciples went through during the Passion as an example. Jesus, who was their friend and teacher, was captured right in front of them, tortured, and murdered. Jesus had told them previously that he would come back, and yet they didn't understand. They were living their lives in fear of what would happen. Peter denied Jesus in front of multiple people, despite the fact that he called him a friend. Thomas doubted that he rose when he did. And I'm sure that while Jesus was still in the tomb, the others were scared and confused about what their futures held as well. But the messianic promise did not fail just because there was turmoil here on earth. Despite the suffering, despite the death, the will of God remained. In fact, the will of God was done through that death, his will to save us. Jesus rose from the dead on the third day, completing the prophecy that he would pay the price for our sins on the cross. Every story in the Bible contains a picture of God's unfailing love. John 1, 4 through 5 states that in him, being Jesus, was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We live in a fallen world, one that is infected by sin. This will inevitably lead to suffering and evil, but does this mean that God's love has failed? Absolutely not. This is because his promises still stand. He did not promise us that, his life, that our lives would be easy or even good for some people, but he did promise that what comes after will be the greatest thing any of us could ever experience. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross is still something that we can all trust in to save and guide us. The darkness has not overcome the light, even when that darkness seems to be overwhelming. The light does not fade, and God's love remains unfailing. And all we have to do is turn to Jesus and trust in his words, and we will receive that light as well. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, we thank you for being the light in the darkness. We thank you for being our helper and our friend. Help our faiths to remain strong throughout all of our days so that any suffering we might experience will not overcome it. In your name we pray, amen. God of earth and sky, how beautiful is 
Thank you. 